You've got 12 tabs, messy exports, and a deadline in two hours. Does this sound familiar? If you're still cleaning data by hand, you're wasting hours and maybe even making mistakes. In this video, I'm gonna show you five Power Query hacks that will blow your mind and change your spreadsheets forever. If that sounds good, let's get rolling. Welcome to the channel. I'm Mike, I'm a senior finance leader, and over the last decade, I've worked in finance everywhere from brand new startups all the way to the Fortune 100. Let me tell you that I made a huge mistake in putting off Power Query for years. I knew it was there, someone had showed me this get data button in Excel, but it seemed like it was gonna be just really complicated, and I didn't feel like I had the time to sit down and learn it, so I just kept doing things the old fashioned way. I finally had an opportunity to just sit down and just force myself to learn it, and everything changed. It literally cut down the time I spent on month-end reporting by 40 hours. That's right, 40 entire hours cut down from month-end because that's how powerful Power Query is. And it's free and it's right on your computer. And now that I've been using Power Query for a few years, I found some hacks that make it even more powerful. And I wanna share those hacks with you today. Make sure to stick around to the end because I'm gonna to toss in a bonus hack that once saved me from a $50,000 mistake in a report. Who's this video for? Well, this is gonna be an intermediate Power Query video. What that means is you need to have a basic understanding of Power Query. I'm not gonna be showing you how to use the basics of the tool. I'm gonna to be showing you some hacks that can stack on top of your existing knowledge. If you don't know Power Query yet, I have a video that will teach you Power Query in under 15 minutes. I'm gonna put that link right here. Make sure to go check out this video and then come back to learn the hacks. If you already know Power Query though, feel free to just keep on going. With all that out of the way, let's get started. Now, let's get started with Power Query hacks. The first hack is a self-updating calendar table. This is really useful for any kind of a time-based analysis, forecast that you need to roll forward, dashboards. It's going to automatically update with all the future dates, and it's going to be able to give you a lot of context like years, month, quarter, and weekday. But instead of you having to maintain the table, Power Query is going to do the work for you. So I've got our file ready to go for Power Query. You'll see I've got all of our connections here with our different data sets and mapping tables. So let's go ahead and get started. So to create a calendar, you can do it where the calendar updates itself just automatically and Power Query makes the decisions. But I'm going to show you a really neat way to not only create the calendar, but that you can control the inputs of the calendar. So let's go ahead and do this. We're going to create two columns here. We're going to do start and we're going to do end. So for start, we want to put in our starting date. And this data set I have is from 2023. So we'll go ahead and do that. And the ending period will be 12, 31, 2023. All right, we're going to want to come up here. We're going to do control T to make this a table. And there we go. So this table, we're going to want to name table date control. All right, so there we go. Then we're going to pull this in to Power Query. So we're going to get data from a table and a range. And now we've added table date control. And we've got our starting point and our ending point. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to go up and we're going to add a custom column. We're going to call this one date. And we're going to put in a custom formula. All right, so we want to create a list. So we're going to do this little squiggle line, which I can never remember what it's called. Sorry about that. But the little squiggle line, we're going to use number from. So that's going to pull in our starting period. We'll go ahead, do some brackets, and then we can do start. All right, go ahead. And that's closed off. We want to connect it. So we'll do dot dot. And then we're going to do number from again. And we're going to pull that in from finish. All right. And then we're going to finish that off with another one of our little squiggly friends. All right. So we want to expand this list. We'll go ahead and click the button here and we're going to expand that to new rows. All right. Then we can go back and we can delete our helper columns. Remember, they're going to stay in your file, but we're going to be able to use Power Query to run these steps. We're going to go ahead and remove those columns. Great. We're going to change this format. We'll change that to a date. Beautiful. And now we can add in our helper columns. So we can come back here. We're going to create columns from date and time. So we've got our date there. We want to go our year. All right. Then we're going to pull in our quarter. 
Then we're going to pull in our month. Man, this would have saved me so much time earlier in my career. There's our month. And then lastly, we'll pull in our day. And that is how you build a self-updating calendar. You can go back, change the dates, run your Power Query, and this entire calendar is ready for you to go. Have any questions so far? Go ahead and drop them in the comments. I read and respond to every single one, and I'm more than happy to help you out. Next, let's talk about building a column from example. Now, Power Query has a lot of abilities through formulas to create columns and do calculations right in your file. You've probably worked with some of that. But sometimes you don't know exactly what you need to write for the column, and that's where this comes in. You just need to type exactly what you want, and Power Query is going to figure it out. No formulas or coding needed. This is really great for fixing names, putting in IDs, adjusting emails, or putting in better formats. You can turn messy exports into clean columns in just seconds. So now let's talk about creating a column from example. So we've got all of our years, quarters, month, days here. I'm not quite sure what the formula is if I want to add the day of the week. So let's go ahead and do a column from example. So I know that the first of the year was a Sunday. So I'm going to go ahead and type in a Sunday. I'm going to hit enter. And now Power Query is saying, okay, you want the, it's guessing that I want the day of the week. That is what I want. I'm going to hit OK. All right, now I'm going to do another one. I want to be able to put a formal date in here. So let's go ahead and hit column from example. And I want this to be Sunday, January 1st. Okay. All right, it's kind of gotten it. It's gotten that I want the day to change. It hasn't gotten that I want the month and date to change. So let's see if we can give it a second example and see if it'll pick it up. This will be Monday, January 2. And there we go. So now it's picked everything up. It sees that I want the date to change and it's giving me the formula. You'll see it's writing everything up here. It's going to tell you what the formula is, but you don't have to worry about writing that yourself. We hit OK. And now we've got our day name and we've got this merged formal date. And that's how you create a column from examples. You can do this with city names, email addresses. There's so many different options. Just tell Power Create what you want. Sometimes you have to give it two or three examples, and then it's just going to go and write the code for you. Our third hack is filtering with parameters. You can create predefined parameters that you can use for filtering. These parameters can be based on entire queries or they can be based on input. It'll help you filter data dynamically. And by changing one input, it will update everything. This is great for region, scenario, time toggles, anything along those lines. Now let's talk about how to filter with parameters. Parameters lets you create dynamic filters based on the output of a query or on an input you specify. Now to get started, to set this up, if you're gonna work with parameters frequently, you wanna come up to view and you wanna check this button to say parameters always allow. Otherwise you could encounter some unexpected functionality. So make sure to go to view, check that button right here. Now let's go back to home. Let's say this is going to be important. We want to carve it out for just one of our locations. So we're going to go up and we're going to create a parameter for one of our locations. So we're going to go create a parameter for just one of our locations. We're going to go to manage parameters. We're going to hit new parameter and we're going to call this one lower Manhattan store filter data set for lower Manhattan only. This adjusted value is going to be a list of values. And we're going to call this default value Lower Manhattan. All right, we'll go ahead and hit OK. So there is the parameter that we've created. You can manage the parameter right here if you need to. That's going to pop open back all of your adjustment windows. Now we're going to go back to our transaction sheet. We're going to go to store location. We're going to do our little filter drop down. We're going to go to text filters and say equals. Then when this comes up, instead of entering or selecting a value, we're going to do a drop down. We're going to go to a parameter. We can choose our parameters. There's Lower Manhattan Store. We'll hit OK. And now this file is filtered just for Lower Manhattan. You can create as many parameters as you need to to do the dynamic filtering. Again, you can put these on the output of a query. So if you have mapping tables and there's data that doesn't fit that mapping table, you can go ahead and have all of that filtered right out. Parameters are just so flexible and super easy to create. If you're enjoying this video, make sure to click the link in the description and join my free weekly newsletter, Finance Automation Insider. Every single Thursday, I'm going to send you automation hacks and tips just like this, and I don't want you to miss a thing. Hack number four is unpivoting for real analysis. This allows you to turn columns into rows for better structure, for better data handling. It's ideal if you want to do Power BI, pivots, and trend analysis. 
works on wide reports and it works on multi-tab monsters. It's so flexible. So now I want to show you how to unpivot a data set. Sometimes you get data sets like we've got here where you've got coffee transactions and food transactions in separate columns. This is the way that a lot of point of sale systems, a lot of financial systems will output the data. But this is really hard to work with in Excel files. It's almost impossible. You can't really pivot this. You can't work with this in Power BI very easily. So what you need to do is unpivot this and that's just super easy to do with Power Query. So what we wanna do is we wanna highlight the columns that we wanna unpivot. We come up here to this button, unpivot columns. There's options here so we can unpivot other columns, only selected, but we're gonna go ahead and hit unpivot columns. And then it takes those headers, it turns them into a new field called attribute, which we can rename if we want to. So we can just call that category. And then we've got our coffee and food transactions all in this nice, easy to manage list. Now, if you wanna go back, there's two options. Option one is the straightforward one where you come over here and just delete the fact that you did the unpivot, or just to show you how to pivot things back, you can take any data set if you want it in a pivot for some reason. Come up here, hit this pivot. In this case, you'll have to select the value column. We'll say that's value. Hit OK. And now we have everything back to pivoted. Or again, we can just come here, delete it all, and we'll go back to our original pivot. Query number five, referencing queries for reuse instead of duplicating them. Referencing means you make a live link to the final output of another query. You can change once and everything updates downstream. This helps you keep the logic clean, it's scalable because you're not creating all that extra data, and it's error-proof because you're referencing whatever the final output of that query is. You can think about these like reusable building blocks for your models. So now let's talk about referencing a query instead of duplicating. Now, the typical way that people would work with a query, let's say that I wanna do some additional transformations, I wanna maintain my data set here with Lower Manhattan, but I wanna do some additional transformations on it separately. What people will typically do is they'll come here, they'll right click and they'll duplicate this query. Now, a couple of things are gonna happen here. First of all, you're adding all of that extra data because you've literally duplicated it. You're adding all those extra calculations, everything like that. The other thing you're doing is that if I come back and if I fix anything in transactions or change any of my steps, it doesn't apply because I duplicated it at that point in time. So there's a much better way. And I rarely see people use this. I didn't even learn this until quite recently. Instead of duplicating, I'm gonna to come to this button that says reference. And now I've created a reference. You'll see how there's none of the steps here, right? Like if I look at transactions, I've got all the steps here. When I duplicated, I had the steps, but now there's no steps, it just says source. And my source is the transactions table. So any changes I make to transaction, they're gonna flow in here. I can add steps then on top of that, and I can transform based on what I'm getting, but any changes I make to the original data set are gonna flow right through. Plus, this is much lighter. It doesn't take all the computing resources because I'm not duplicating all this data. I'm just referencing the final output. It's a great way to make sure that any transformations you've already made flow right through. If you're enjoying these hacks, I'd really appreciate if you could hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. This way I know that I'm on the right track. Plus, I'll be able to send you new videos every single Monday. And our bonus hack handling missing data. This one saved me from a $50,000 reporting error when data wouldn't have pulled into a pivot that we needed to see. There's two options here. You can use fill down to complete group data, or you can filter or replace nulls with zeros in fields to make sure that there's no errors. This lets you spot and fix silent errors before they ever break your reports. And again, this saved me from a $50,000 reporting mistake. All right, and now for our bonus hack, I wanna show you how to make sure that your data set is complete and fix it if it's not. Now there's two different ways you can approach this. And this is what saved me from a $50,000 reporting error where I had an incomplete data set and it wouldn't have pulled in all of our revenue. So let's go to transaction data and use this as an example. So the first thing is sometimes you pull in and you get null. Null means that there was no value in that space. So you might've pulled in you know, all these columns and maybe five of the 10 columns were populated, the other five weren't populated. It's gonna pull in as null, not a zero or a blank like Excel would. So we need to fix that. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna right click on product ID. We're gonna replace values. We wanna find value null and we wanna replace any nulls with zeros. So we'll know if it says zero product ID, it didn't map correctly. We'll hit okay. And now we've replaced all the nulls. So we know that there are no null values here. Now, the alternative option you can do is you can again right click and you can come down to fill and you can fill down or fill up. This is really helpful, especially on things like if I come over to dates, sometimes a date will go missing, but because the data set's continuous, it's a pretty safe assumption that it's either from the date above it or the date below it. Same with if you're working with categories, pretty good chance it's the category above it or the category below it. 
So if you think it's the category above it, you can fill down. I can right click here, I can click fill down and anywhere that there's a blank, it's gonna fill that information in. Now let's say if I come over to product category and I think I need to do this up, I think it's gonna be the category above it. I can right click, I can hit fill up and then I know that these categories are gonna be complete. So those are three different ways to fix nulls and to replace data up or down to make sure your entire data set is complete. If you enjoyed this video, I highly encourage you to check out my video on Power BI. You'll learn how to build a dashboard in Power BI in under 20 minutes. I'm gonna put that video right here. If you don't know already, Power Query is the fundamental data infrastructure of Power BI. So now that you know this, now that you know the hacks, Power BI is gonna be just a seamless transition for you and you'll be able to get up to speed pretty quickly. So definitely make sure to check that out. I'll catch you over there. This is Mike signing off from F9 Finance. Cheers.